Several studies show that COVID causes an array of neurological manifestations. This research highlights the possible mechanisms and provides insight to the symptoms. They are divided into direct and indirect mechanisms. Firstly, ACE2 receptor mechanism. Many of you would be aware of the RAS system, renin angiotensin aldosterone system. It is what is responsible for maintaining your blood pressure and volume. Your kidneys release renin in response to low renal blood flow and this chemical converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1, which is converted to angiotensin 2 in the lungs by an enzyme called ACE1. Angiotensin 2 is responsible for all actions of RAS system. And in a case of RAS hyperactivation, you can get hypertension, inflammation, cardiovascular events and pretty much even similar to congestive heart failure. ACE2 downregulates angiotensin 2 and RAS system and is thus protective to body. The way COVID enters a cell is by binding to ACE2 receptors of the cells. This downplays ACE2 and hyperactivates RAS. Our brainstem and hypothalamus are rich in ACE2. So one possibility is that COVID enters these areas hematogenously and binds to ACE2. This hyperactivates RAS and damages brain cells by various hyperinflammation cascades like NFKB pathway overdrive or calicrine cascade overdrive, both of which will harm brain cells. This can be confirmed in post-mortem as brain tissue will have inflammation, edema and damage. Second mechanism is through the olfactory bulb. Ever had that sensation of loss of smell and taste after COVID? Well, that might be COVID trying to hijack your brain through nerves of nose. COVID can directly enter through those nerves and invade your olfactory bulb, which regulates your sense of smell. It is a short distance from here to brain. Our body is in a state of inflammation during COVID, and the effects of RAS activation in lungs leads to less oxygen and high acidic states. This can decouple redox reactions and cause inflammatory damage everywhere including brain. Firstly, we can have encephalitis. Because of the increased RAS hyperactivation, our body will have raised blood pressure and CNS pressures, and our body will have inflammation. This both can cause encephalitis. The hyperoxemia from the lungs also contribute. Secondly, we can have stroke. Similar to how RAS activation in congestive heart disease patients causes stroke, a similar mechanism can happen here. The brain tissue damage produces a foci of electrical activity which can lead to epilepsy.